All right, time to go teach. Hello and welcome to this episode of Tutor Tutors where we are continuing our unit of biochemistry and we are looking at pH today. So for pH, what is it? How does it work? We have a few different targets. First, describing what pH means and what it actually measures because it's very hard to understand something if we don't understand what it means and what it is all about. So pH is going to measure something. It's a unit of measurement, and clearly that's going to be something we're going to look at. Next is identifying if a solution is an acid or if it is a base. Clearly then, pH must have something to do with measuring acids or bases, which it does. And lastly for today is we're going to calculate something. We have to be able to calculate what the difference in pH actually means. How does a pH of three compare to a pH of four, for example? That is something that we're going to be looking at at the end. So let's get started. First off, what is pH? Well, it is a measurement of the concentration of hydrogen ions. And hydrogen ions are only going to be protons. Because if a hydrogen atom loses its electron, then only thing left is just a single solitary proton. And that is what we're going to be looking at. So when we measure the concentration of hydrogen ions in a solution, that's going to be measuring the pH. The scale typically goes from zero to 14, but it can exceed zero and it can exceed 14. So we can go above 14, go to 15 or 16, or we can go into the negatives. But for most purposes, we are going to only be looking at solutions that have a pH between zero and 14. And there are three different categories that a solution can exist in. It can either be acidic, basic, or it can be neutral. Acids, they are going to donate a proton. That is what acids do. They are, in other words, going to increase the hydrogen ion concentration of the solution. And they are described as being corrosive. And anything that does that, it would have a pH less than 7. Bases, on the other hand, they are able of donating a hydroxide ion or or they accept that hydrogen ion that could have been donated from an acid. Either way, they are the opposite or doing the opposite of what an acid does. They will decrease the hydrogen ion concentration within a solution, and thus they can be described as being caustic, and they would also have a pH that is greater than 7. And neutral, well, they would have an equal amount of donation of hydrogen ions as well as hydroxide ion, or they accept an equal amount of hydrogen ions as what they donate, thus staying in this immediate balance of hydrogen ions, and their pH would be 7. If we look at water, for example, water, pure water, has a pH of 7. It is purely neutral. And the reason it is is because if water which is right here, H2O, were to dissociate. In other words, if it were to break apart, it would break apart into these two parts, a hydrogen ion and a hydroxide ion, H plus and OH minus, in equal amounts. The OH minus is basic and the H plus is acidic. And since the water molecules, when it would dissociate, would as release an equal amount of both, water is neutral. If we were to think about this, some common solutions that would exist upon the pH scale, where we have less than seven would be acidic and greater than seven would be basic, and seven is neutral. Pure water would exist at a pH of 7. Battery acid would exist with a pH of approximately 1. Gastric acid, a pH of 2. Vinegar, a little bit more, about 3, 2.5. Coffee is still slightly acidic at a pH of 5. 
milk, pH of about six and a half. Seawater, though, is actually slightly basic with a pH of about 7.7. Bleach is basic with a pH of approximately 12, and lye with a pH of approximately 14 is extremely basic. These are common substances that we can come across, and they're typical pHs. Acid rain exists at a pH of approximately 4, and typical rainwater is also very close to what coffee is at about that pH of five and a half. So just so we can see that not all water is actually at that neutral pH because not all water is pure water. Rainwater has a lot of impurities to it as the water collects different things from the atmosphere. And if it collects enough pollutants, we can end up with our acid rain, which is obviously much lower on the pH scale where it is more acidic, hence the name. But the pH scale is not just a simple scale. It is a logarithmic scale. It means that the difference between each of our measurements or each of our values is actually a base 10. This means that the pH of one is 10 times more acidic than a pH of two. And a pH of eight is 10 times more basic than a pH of seven. And a pH of nine is 10 times more basic than a pH of eight is. A pH of 10 is 100 times more basic than a pH of eight and a pH of 11 would be a thousand times more basic than a pH of eight. So each step is a multiple of 10. And that is how the scale works. And that means that when we are moving from a pH of six to a pH of five or four or three, since each step is a multiple of 10, there's a huge difference in the pH of something say like six and a pH of three or two. Another thing that I want us to realize is that a pH of seven is not special. Just because pure water has a pH of seven and that's what is neutral, that does not mean that that is a pH that is a special pH. Our body is not neutral. Our body has all sorts of different pHs throughout it. Yes, our blood is a approximately a pH of seven. It's mostly neutral, slightly basic, but mostly neutral. And we also have our liver, which is going to be a bowel neutral. But when we are going into it, we also see that we have certain secretions within our small intestine that are going to be basic. In our stomach, we have acidic secretions. We have different pHs throughout our bodies that our bodies have to maintain so that they maintain homeostasis. If our body does not maintain the different pHs in the different areas where it's supposed to be, then we would have all sorts of problems. We wouldn't be able to digest things as well, or we'd be starting to digest ourselves. And that would be a, a huge, huge issue. So our bodies have multiple pHs. There's nothing special about a pH of seven. To maintain those different pHs, our bodies use something called a buffer, which is typically a weak acid or a weak base, and buffers help maintain this pH of a specific solution. They help stabilize the pH of our system. We have buffers within our body to make sure that the blood, for example, that's supposed to be between 7 and 7.4 stays at about 7 to 7.4. Our bodies use buffers to help us maintain homeostasis. And the environment also has buffers within it to help maintain the pH of different aquatic ecosystems. They resist those changes to pH and help the system stay stable. Then summary of all this, solutions have different ways that we can measure them, one of which is reactivity, and for that we can use pH. We can determine what the concentration of hydrogen ions is and thus how reactive that specific solution will be and how it will be reactive. And to identify these, we have made three different categories, acids, bases, and neutrals. 
acids having a pH that's less than 7, bases having a pH that's greater than 7, and neutrals having a pH that is exactly 7. And the scale is a logarithmic scale, which means it's a base 10 system. So it's a multiple of 10 each step you go. pH of 3 is 10 times more basic than a pH of 2 and 100 times more basic than a pH of 1. All right? And that is pHs. Until next time, be awesome, stay awesome.